Hi there, welcome along to today's vlog. If you're new here, please do hit that subscribe button and click a like whether you're new or not. So a little while ago, in fact six months ago, sorry Stephen, um, asked me this question. Hi Dan, tech cheesy ideas. Number one, your on-stage audio setup from the mic all the way through to the PA system, uh, which you choose with respect to kit. And two, reverb and loops, both on-stage performance and as part of the recording process. I'm going to answer the stage audio presence, but I can only answer it as I have it now in my current situation. Now just to outline, at various stages in my career I have got quite silly, um, quite over the top in what I use with my gear, but as I've got more experience, as I've been playing now professionally for 25 years, I've started to learn that as an acoustic jazz musician I ought not to be spending an awful lot of time messing around with gear. And in fact, no matter what style of music you're playing, unless it's really electronic, and let's face it, the saxophone is not an electronic instrument, you could always get an iwi if you wanted to do that. Um, you want to be spending the time making the saxophone sound good, and to do that you need to practice your long tones, your scales, and quite often we're all looking for that magic formula, uh, and actually what we really need to do is practice. But, getting serious, you do still want good gear. Now, I don't really anymore have control over what happens with the PA system because I don't get involved in that. I don't want to be involved in it. I find that musicians who spend too much time faffing around with PA gear are not often focusing on the real thing that they're there to do, which is to make music. And I know mentally for me, if I'm spending so much time thinking about the PA system, setting the gear up, I have paid my dues doing that. I've done it a lot of times. Um, if I had to go and set the PA system up, my head would be on setting up the PA system and then I would very quickly have to get myself into the uh, mode of being a musician and also leading a band. And obviously if you're leading a band, that's a one big job. And if you're then trying to be a musician, you have to play as well. And often if it's your band, you have to play really, really well. It's a lot of extra pressure that I just didn't need and don't want and don't want to have anymore. So it got to the point even well, it cost 15, 16, well, longer, 17, 18 years ago, where I used to pay a guy to even come and set up the PA system on jazz gigs. I used to do a very, um, sort of a residency at the Villa Hotel. I think there's a video here knocking about from a long time ago of the Villa. Um, and I actually got to the point, because if I was at the end of the gig chatting to people, which you've got to do, you need to talk to people, you need to sell CDs, you need to build relationships with people, you can't just take off. Um, by the time I'd finished nattering to people, packed the PA away, got in the car, it was like an hour, an hour and a half later, and this is my job. You know, the next day I had to go out and play another gig. I didn't want to be doing it. I wanted to use my time really efficiently. So um, I hired a guy in to do the PA for me. I just added the money onto the bill for the gig. Um, and it was his job to set the PA system up. It's a jazz band. It shouldn't need too much. You've got the, if we had a vocalist, the vocal mic, the sax mic, the keyboard, uh, maybe the bass DI, never really mic the drums up. And that was his job. And it was his job to pack it all away, put it in my car, give me the key back. And then I got in the car and drove off. That was actually what I feel about doing with PA systems. I don't want to spend too much time. Now I'm very fortunate, I tend to work in theatres or in decent good jazz clubs with good PA systems with professional sound engineers, but still you come across sound engineers who haven't got a clue about the saxophone. For example, they always still want to mic the saxophone here, right by the bell, and it even happened last Friday, I was doing the same thing, no, you want the sax mic further away, again check out uh, this vlog up here uh, where you can watch the thing about positioning the saxophone mic and where it should go. So my main mic, as you know before I've done a vlog about it here, about this being the best saxophone mic, it's Electro Voice RE20, it's a really really good mic. I first saw Chris Potter using this, uh, spoke to a few sound engineers, a few other saxophone players, it was my it was my lockdown purchase and I'm using it more and more and more. I really like it, it's got a nice little roll off just in the right place for the saxophone, um, it's pretty heavy duty it sits on the stand, it does really well. What I do like about it is if the stage is quite loud, and I don't often play on large stages, this is pretty directional, it's a pretty good mic, um, but it's, it's got a great sound across it, and it works on all the saxophones. Often I've found that some microphones will give me a really nice sound on the alto or the soprano and terrible on tenor will just tip up around that 750 hertz that I don't like to happen. Um, I just realized, am I slightly out of thing here? Maybe I'm right. Uh, so anyway, this is my first main choice mic. It's what I'm playing on this gig. <laughs> Thank you.
However, if the venue's a bit smaller, as it was last weekend when I was playing, I go to my B uh, Shaw Beater 57A. I don't like um, SM57s, not a big fan of those. SM58s are okay. This actually, oh, oh nearly lobbed it at you then. <laughs> it's like in all typical uh, Shaw microphones, Shaw dynamic microphones, it probably could go through a pint of beer and still play well. I'm not trying that with it though, but it does sit in my gig bag all year round and it just comes out when it's necessary. Um, story behind this, I was doing Burt's Jazz Club in Belfast, I was doing a residency there, they had a couple of these on stand and I really liked the sound of them uh, to the extent I went and bought my own because I just thought actually this is a really good mic, it sits in this little pencil case, stays in the gig bag and it's a really really good mic. Again, similar to the um, EV20, RE20, um, it's, it's just got this little nice little crispness to the saxophone sound that's not too bright not too dark um, in terms of uh, radio mic gigs so i really really like this kimophon uh, saxophone mic it just clips on the bell um, you can watch the review of it up here that i did last summer um really really good mic and bang for your buck one of the best radio mics i've played um, i'm not a big fan of radio mics i just find that they again the brightness of the saxophone and you clip them on the bell they're not great but you know, it's horses for courses in those sort of gigs, you, you have to wear your clip-on mic. I never ever use a clip-on mic for playing jazz, but funk or soul bands, which I play less and less of these days, I am using the Kimophone. If I'm in a studio situation, I'm often at the mercy of the engineer, but AKG 414s are always good. I always try and ask for a pair of those. Uh, the DPA, I think 80 it is, uh, that Bramford uses, which is like a gooseneck microphone that Rob Hunter recommended for me. Uh, that's also really, really good. I have used, I did um, the gig in Kingston, uh, I think there's a bit here. In November and they had like a gooseneck microphone like the DPA thing, uh, 80, I used that. It's okay, it's not a brilliant on the tenor, but it just, it's, I'm not a fan of using SM57's drop down the bell of the saxophone, I really think they sound naff. Um, but in a studio situation, the U87 is a mic I'll ask for, depends whether the um, studio has that, but any decent studio tends to have that in play. But it's a U87 or a pair of AKG 414s, or kind of whatever mic's knocking about. Sometimes some engineers like to have you with five or six different microphones all around you, kind of trying to pick one up, and I always joke that the SM57 in the corner is probably gonna get the best sound, um, but you know, if you spend too much time, and I realise the irony of saying this in this video, if you spend too much time worrying about gear and not about what you're playing in the music, then you've kind of got it wrong. You know, look at kind of, you know, kind of Blue was recorded on five microphones, I think. You know, think how good that sounds. Just five microphones, no clouds banging of the drums. It still sounds phenomenal. As far as reverb settings go, that's probably a subject for another vlog, but in terms of live, I don't like reverb at all live, especially in a jazz gig. I kill engineers who try and use reverb on a jazz gig um, because there's this thing where they try and make the saxophone sound like, you know, it's a Kenny G record. And as for effects pedals, I don't really use it anymore. There was, again, a vlog up here that I, I did use to use some effects pedals, uh, particularly around the time I did my album, What If Rupert Murdoch Like Jazz, which is a lot of the music you hear in the intro to this album. It's 10 years ago, that album now. Before the gig, having to put my pedals together, work out what combinations of pedals I wanted to do, all this other stuff, and not concerning myself with the notes I was going to play. And I think if you're in that situation, go and be a guitarist. <laughs> So one quick little story I wanted to share with you about PA systems. Way back 20 years ago, I had a gig at Christmas. Now the gig was halfway between my house and the singer's house. I was gonna pick the singer up, Sarah Hughes actually, you can see in this vlog. And I packed the gear in the car, it was December, it was near Christmas. Drove for the gig, set the PA system up, <clears throat> went to Lancaster, which is another 50 miles away. Picked Sarah up, got back to the gig, opened my boot, no saxophones. I've been so focused on the gig and setting up the PA system, I totally forgot my instruments. I then phoned my then girlfriend and went, 
my saxophone's around. So they're not in the house. I said, can you look outside the back door? Outside the back door on the patio in freezing conditions was my tenor and my soprano. I was not best pleased with myself. So that kind of highlights how little interest I want to have in setting up PA systems as a saxophone player. You know, I want to focus on being a band leader and a saxophone player. Add the PA into the mix, it gets awfully complicated and I'm not focusing on what I should be focusing on. Bizarrely, that last tune was a stranger to me until yesterday, An Afternoon in Paris by John Lewis. Uh, I'm learning it, I'm hoping to get it right, and I'll be playing it at the gig next time we do our music in Paris, which at the moment is scheduled to be the 3rd of August in London, although I'm hoping to be out doing that show again before then. So there you go, that's uh, today. I hope that proved useful to you, Stephen, and also to everyone else when it comes to choosing microphones to play on the saxophone live. Um, if you've got any more questions, any more Q&A, any more Tech Tuesday ideas, I'm all ears. Thanks very much for watching, see you soon.